Hey guys, thank you very much for joining me for this video today. And in this video, I'm going to go through the editing process of this beautiful Porsche 911 that I took yesterday. Uh, I want to just quickly elaborate that this was my first attempt at light painting a car, which uh, for the first attempt, I think it turned out really great. So first of all, I want to talk to you about my gear that I used to create the shaft. So first of all, my light. And this is uh, a Young Neo YN360 light stick. It's an RGB uh, LED lamp. It's powered by this Sony NPF batteries. And well, it's pretty cheap, um, but it does the job. And I've already done a video about this and I will link this video up somewhere here. So this was my light. Uh, my camera was Sony a7 III, so nothing fancy about it. Um, and the lens, it is kind of something fancy, because this is a monster by Sigma. So this is Sigma 105 f1.4 art lens. This is a beast. This is totally insane. So the front element is a huge piece of glass. Uh, and it, uh, it has a diameter uh, of 105 millimeters for the filter thread. So this is absolutely insane. It weighs almost two kilograms. Um, it does not have any kind of image stabilization, uh, but it was initially um, initially designed to use with a DSLR. But then people at Sigma actually uh, readjusted the flange and uh, now it is actually usable on a Sony mirrorless camera. But again, heavy AF, expensive AF, but it's amazingly sharp. And that's why I love this lens. So that's all about the gear. Let's jump into Photoshop. So welcome back. Um, this is the final result of our beautiful Porsche. Let's disable this and let's build this shot from the bottom. So I took two exposures in total uh, because I thought, uh, well, this is my first time light painting a car. Everything, everything can go wrong. So I took uh, I took two exposures, so this is the first one. And I really liked the light streak and the shape of it. I think it's really straight, it's really like beautiful. Uh, and the wheel is actually pretty well lit and the caliper, red caliper actually like almost also well lit. So the next exposure, the next exposure kind of a more ugly, a bit more ugly. So the shot is kind of overexposed a bit and the light streak is uh, again a bit more ugly um, the only thing that i took from this exposure let me just uh, enable my mask so this is without this exposure and this is with this exposure so i actually took uh, the windshield uh, the side uh, window of a driver and this tiny light reflection on the side mirror because in comparison to the previous one this is this reflection looks more neat and the windows here are just kind of cleaner again in comparison to my first exposure and this is all the exposure blending that i've day uh, that i've done i said done and made and i said dame so yeah uh the next layer is a just clean up layer uh, nothing fancy i just uh, used a stem tool uh clone tool to uh, erase all of those unnecessary reflections. And yeah, the next layer is uh, kind of weird uh, because without the mask, uh, this layer actually makes everything more blurry. But let me explain. When this effect is actually, um, if this effect only affects the car paint, uh, so with this is without and this is with, it kind of makes the car paint more like shiny and I thought it looks really beautiful and that's why I left it. And the way to achieve this effect, uh, you go to, uh, you can do this in Lightroom or you can do this in Photoshop, just go to Filter, Camera Raw, and there's a slider called Clarity. And uh, like most people uh, adjust the clarity and they increase the clarity, but now for this kind of effect we need to decrease um, the clarity. And this effect actually uh, showed up on uh, clarity like minus 60. So it's pretty like uh, way over there. But I think it kind of smoothens everything out. 
it uh, can actually blur out some of the unnecessary reflections in the car paint if you are not using a CPL filter, which you should. Uh, so yeah, and I think it does make a car a bit more glowy. Uh, so that's it with this group and another group. Uh, this layer is uh, tiny adjustments. Uh, look at the, uh, at the bottom left corner. I adjusted the ground. And I actually rotated the Porsche logo because I think that like like this it looks more like I like it just um, then I introduced uh, another background uh, so I just uh, used a pen tool to make a path around uh, around the car not the step not the very interesting step but you have to do this in order to achieve like to make this quality picture so. Uh, I just cut out the car, and that wa uh, that uh, that's how I could uh, I was able to insert this background wall. Um, this is just a photo that I downloaded from Pexels.com. It's a website with free stock images that you can do with them, like anything you want, because it is a CC0 license. And I will link this website down in the description below because it is really amazing. Uh, so. This is our new background. It's a brick wall with a graffiti. And now let's make some adjustments to, you know, blend them a bit more. Uh, so first of all, I uh, added curves adjustment layer to make, uh, to add a bit of contrast to our wall. Uh, the second is, uh, the next layer is hue and saturation. It kind of desaturates uh, this wall a little bit. The next layer is kind of a vignette. And the last layer of our background is a gradient so uh, so the car is actually was like preventing some light uh, from hitting the bottom of this wall and that's why this wall kind of needs to be darker and next let's do some adjustments to our floor um, again this is some uh, like gradient to make this darker a vignette to make this even more darker uh, this is a hue saturation, but uh, this layer actually deals with our glass surfaces and windows. So this is without this hue and saturation layer. Look at this. Uh, look at the windshield. Uh, the windshield has uh, this uh, ugly light streak, uh, like highlight uh, from the street light. Uh, I was too lazy to, you know, paint this out to delete this, so I just decided to desaturate it. Uh, that's why this is a huge saturation layer. It is kind of desaturating our glass surfaces. And the last layer is a gradient map that uh, makes our like our ground almost black and white. But now uh, the uh, the ground and the wall uh, they look more kind of more together, more more like like this. Yeah. Uh, the next layer. Uh, it's kind of uh, darkening the front of the car because uh, the same logic applies that um, according to our light streak and to our highlights uh, the light is actually not uh, getting to the front of the car and that's why I decided to like make it more realistic and darken the front of the car so the light like the spread of light is looks more natural uh, then our last group is all about the wheel because the wheel right now looks kind of ugly so the tire and the rubber on the tire look like it has uh, looks like it has some kind of green tint, and the first layer is a hue saturation that uh, disables and uh, adjusts the green saturation here. So it just makes uh, like deletes the green out of that. Then uh, there's a curves adjustment layer that makes it more contrasty, and uh, the last layer. This is a I just took a brush and uh, brushed with transparency over the wheel, over the tire, and uh, like to make it more darker. And uh, as we can see, it makes it more contrasty and the wheel more like pops out. And the last layer here is a black and white gradient map on the floor. And now I think our background is uh, like almost 100% black and white. But then uh, I saved it as a TIFF file, uh, imported it uh, into Lightroom again, and uh, I applied a little uh, a little preset, so it introduces a bit more color to our like previously almost black and white background, and it also adjusts um, the blue color of the car, 
and it introduces a bit more clarity to the wheel, to the caliper and to the like overall picture. But I think it looks like it, I, I tried to make this look natural and I think it does look natural. Um, you know, because um, there are more, uh, there are a lot of uh, photos, automotive photos on the internet, on the internet that look uh, fake and you can see that they were heavily edited uh, with all of those uh, presets, heavy presets, and I tried um, to like preserve the naturalness, uh, the natural look of the scar with this light preset here. So that's it, I believe, for this video breakdown of the shot. Um, if you have uh, any questions about my gear, about Photoshop, about everything, uh, please leave a comment down below. I will leave a link to all my gear in the description below. And uh, I forgot to say that you should guys subscribe to my channel because it's fun. And yeah, uh, so thank you guys very much for joining me and I will see you in my next video.